Right, so in a change from bloody micro quads, today we've got in something more my style. Zing! Um, if you watch my recent waffle video, you'll see that I mentioned these um, and I approached Patrick Zing, who was um, working in conjunction with iFlight on these motors to see if I could review them. Um, and he was getting inundated with requests from everyone and his dog. Um, and he's, he said it said basically no at the time, but he was a really nice guy. So I ordered them um, and bought them directly from iFlight. And then the day after, um, Banggood got them in um, and said they could give them me for free for a review. Um, so I contacted the people at iFlight. Um, they kindly refunded me and the Banggood ones have arrived today. And I've been really excited about these mortars ever since I first saw them because um, they're really stunning. Um, so if I just open this plastic tub, I don't know how well this is going to come across on video, but they truly are a pretty mortar in my view. And this is probably the least blingy of the lot of them. Um, this is a 2207. Um, they also do it in a 2306, which is all pink um, with pink wiring as well. And they do a 2306, which is grey and red, um, both of which are stunning. And the thing that originally drew my eye to them is this curved bell shape um, and the slats on the top. I just thought it was a really, really nice design. Um, now, I've got mine in 1700 kV. Um, because my intention when I first looked at these was to put them on the 6 inch smooth operator and run them on 6S. Um, and depending on whether the Hyperlaw RS Plus frame um, rocks up or not by the time I next get the chance to fly, I'll either put them on that frame or the, the uh, 6 inch smooth operator and test them out that way. I was hoping to do um, the testing as, as part of this video but I'm pretty much tied up for the next sort of week or so. Um, and the weather's awful here, so I don't know if I'm going to get a chance to put them in the air. But this video is really, it's not going to be um, bench testing or anything like that. I think um, Engineer X has also got these motors in, so you'll probably see a video from him at some point. And I'll leave a link to his channel, as I always do when it comes to motors in the description. But I'm really coming at these from the perspective um, of a pilot. Um, I'm not bothered about outright thrust figures or anything like that. I'm really looking for smoothness, um, relative um, efficiency, although I don't think that's such a big deal with motors, um, but really just flyability. Now, naturally, um, I tend to be a guy who prefers 2306s to 2207s, which is what this is, but the, the 2306 of this motor doesn't come in anything less than, I think, think 2450 kV which in my mind is a is a bit of an oversight because it's also a pink one which absolutely looks um, looks gorgeous but mine my kind of feelings on 23 or 6 versus 22 or 7 or a 22 or 7 like this will have more power and it will make its power in a more sort of linear um, slightly more aggressive way um, whereas a 23 or 6 will be slightly softer and give you more resolution at the bottom end but fade a little bit on the top end compared to a mortar um, of this size. Which you prefer? There's no right or wrong answer. It really depends on the type of pilot you are. I tend to prefer the sort of smooth flowing stuff so 23 or 6 tends to suit me better. Um, if you're a more aggressive pilot um, and really into sort of snappy moves um, you'd probably prefer a 2207 or a 228, which I think they're developing um, as well. So, one of the things that caught my eye on, the, eye on this motor, as you can see, is this beautiful curved bell. And this origin originally came out, I think, first on Engineer X's own Brother Hobby 2407 or, or 2307, I think it was. Um, and the curved bell should in theory, help with cooling. Apparently the slatted fins on top help um, reduce heat by around sort of 15% or so. And we've seen this sort of slatted design all the way back to sort of early brother hobby motors, tornadoes and motors like that. So there's nothing really um, unusual in either of these designs. It's more the fact that they've been put together in such a neat and tidy package. And the thing that really grabs my eye is if you look at the specifications, you've got 7 or 7.5 um, aluminium bell, so obviously the stronger stuff. 
you've got a titanium shaft you've got four by nine by four bearings so they're the big strong bearings rather than the horrible little uh, nasty ones which don't last very long um, you've got a good length of wire I think it's 160 mil and they're pretty light as well so if I just sort of weigh this guy and you'll see so this is with the full 160 mil of wire and it comes in thirty-three point thirty-three point seven grams. So if you reduce that down to short wires, the equivalent that Brother Hobby or somebody like that uses to weigh their mortars, you're looking at a, a two to seven, which weighs less than twenty-nine grams, which is super super light. Um, so you've really got all the best materials plus um, a lightweight mortar as well. Um, so it's pretty impressive. Um, we've got 16 by 16 um, mount hole options. So I think let's take it apart and we'll see what we've got. So the first thing is, um, and we've also got a lovely M3 screw at the bottom rather than those horrible, cheap, nasty m2 ones which strip so opening this up is going to be nice and easy can't see any thread lock on there although it did take a little bit of effort to um, come apart so you might want to add a little bit of thread lock onto your um, onto your screw so if I just take this guy apart and we'll see what's inside. Right, so I've taken the bell off. Um, it was a relatively tight um, fit and took some force to, um, to get it off. So if we just look at the bell first of all, um, we've got grooves around the top which will help hold your mortar. If we look inside we can see there is barely any if at all balancing gunk we've got a lip to hold the magnets in place. There's a little washer here, let me just see if I can get it off. Right, so there's a little washer you should take off which will reveal the slightly interesting part of this. You see there is like a a rubber green, almost like a flight controller soft mount. And the idea of this is in a hard crash when you sort of hit the ground like so, it will protect the bearings a little bit from getting hit by the bell when it's um, when it impacts on itself now I can't say as that's an issue that I've had before but clearly somebody's been thinking quite a lot about this I've got to say the, the quality of the machining and the finish is so much better than even the brother hobbies that I've had recently. Um, this reminds me actually of the, the RCN power, actually I really liked because they were super smooth. They also had a lack of balancing gunk on them as well and it really just shows that some of these other motor manufacturers are sort of knocking brother hobby etc out of the park um, because if you're not using a lot of balancing gunk on your motors it tends to mean that your manufacturing process is pretty damn good in the first place 
And equally, if we look at the stator, it looks like we've got single strand windings. I don't know what those laminations are, but they're very, very tiny. And the wire is ever so neatly wound. Got a nice strong retention bore along here. What gorge are these wires? 20 are they? Yeah, 20 gorge wire. So the construction to me really does look good. Um, these are NSK bearings. The magnets are N52s. And as I said, that shaft is titanium and is hollow because I can see all the way out of the other end. So if I just put this guy back together again, if I can get it in, and I feel ever so smooth in the hand. So yeah, my impre initial impressions are um, this is looking like a hell of a good motor. It's got, I mean, it's got everything that you would kind of want, really. Your props aren't going to come loose and uh, come off because obviously you've got these little grooves here. Um, it's a really pretty motor. Um, we'll have to wait and see if it runs cool like they say. It come with, comes with a little hardware pack. Interestingly, this the screws in the hard bike, hardware pack have got sort of blue on them, which looks almost like thread lock. I don't know what it is. Let's have a look. Yeah, I don't know what there is. So it looks almost like paint or something, but I don't suppose it makes any difference. Now, one of the things that's come up that I, should, I probably should mention is there's another motor which looks pretty similar to this one, but is a lot more expensive, and it's by Career Rear, who have released their own motor. She don't know who is originally by, um, but it looks very similar to this. But this has a two-part bell. You can see it attaches along here. Whereas the Korea Korea one, or Korea Rear, is a one-part bell. And I approached um, Patrick Zing about this, and he was really chilled out about it. He said. Career ear had been um, bad mouthing them for cloning, etc. Um, and he went on to show me some of the prototype they'd done um, with this um, particular motor. I'll show you the pictures up here. Um, and he, he went on to say that you know the original idea um, had come from, or not come from, but he'd seen on the Engineer X motor. And there's even a, a he even showed me a message between himself and the Brother Hobby rep. Um, chatting away so there's no sort of hard feelings there but um, it's not a clone it just happens to have a similar bell design and I think the major thing for this guy is at the time I went to buy these I think they were about 15 quid each so it's firmly in the sort of mid-range price point and to me that makes it really attractive because if you take this for 15 quid with all the fancy features that you would expect on the best motors from T-Motor or Brother Hobby um, and you compare it to one of those motors which are, you know, 19, 18, 20, 21 quid um, they're quite a bit cheaper and a lot, lot prettier in my opinion. So yeah, so I think that pretty much covers it. Um, this particular one is in, available in a number of different KVs for 5S, 6S and 4S. Um, as I said, the 2306, which is the pink one, is truly stunning and that's available um, in 2450, I think, KV and possibly a higher one as well. And there's a 2206, which is available in lower KVs for 6S and higher KVs as well. So 
What I'd like to see from iFlight is the 2306 in about 1750, 800, sorry, 1800 kV, um, which would be my perfect motor. As it is, to my mind, I mean, we'll see how long they'll last, but from everything I can see here, and even thinking to put in a little rubber um, sort of grommet or whatever you call it to stop those hard impacts, um, I think we've got a really, really sort of potentially special motor um, at a really good price. So yeah, so next um, video, um, as I said, apologies that I can't do it in this one because the weather's so bad and I haven't had the time, but the next video I'll put it on a quad, either the 5S, uh, sorry, the 6S 5 inch RS Plus that I'll be building or my beloved um, six inch smooth operator and we'll see how they go. So yeah, so I shall let you know how I get on um, and let you know what I think of them in the air. Cheers guys, thanks, bye bye.